much. So after we uh, got scared uh, by Alex and after Ben explained to us why automation is probably the key to proper data uh, access, data, data security, especially around access management. Uh, Ran, would you like to take us to how we can also protect our data using encryption, especially in BigQuery, but I guess that you will also tell us that it's not just in BigQuery. Uh, so Ran, just for you guys to know, Ran is a, a lead software engineer with many, many years of experience. He works today as a CTO of the service for early stage startups and uh, also as a data consultant and uh, really, really short due diligence. Uh, I also work, I had the privilege to work with Ran together, uh, even specifically uh, on, on such a project. Ran, the Thank stage you, is... Yours. Yeah. Thank you, Gidi. Uh, thank you, everybody, that you survived uh, till now, right? Like, uh, it's already late and, like, uh, you're still here. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about encryption in BigQuery. Um, this is actually a result of a project that Gidi and I did together in order to uh, protect our data pipeline. And we are going to discuss today about the important principles on data pipeline protection, and we will see how we used uh, out of the books, out of the box BigQuery tools that provide us uh, the ability to perform such tasks. Now, it's important to say that even if you don't use BigQuery, uh, you still may get be may benefit from this talk, since uh, if you use any other data warehouse solution, you might get ideas about how to do it or how to implement such principle in your own data platform. Do we have the poll, uh, uh, Gidi? No, so so no? for some okay. reason we couldn't uh, publish it. Sorry. Anyhow, so I don't know how many of you are using BigQuery or not, but anyhow, I think that it's still relevant for you. Uh, so is it working? Yes. So before we start, I, I would like to tell you a bit about myself more than Gidi told you. So I've been coding since I was uh, very young, and I'm actually pretty passionate about technology but I even more interesting about places without technology lives today. Uh, and although I'm, not, I'm going to talk to you a lot about bits and bytes and number, uh, I try, generally try to be connected to my inner child and follow the philosophy of the little prince. Throughout my career, I worked solely with startups, uh, two of which I founded myself. One of them was in the field of uh, farming management and the other one was in the field of chronic pain prevention. And for the last two years, I've been working as a constructor and offer CTO as a service for early stage startups and data engineer services. I help companies to set up the data architecture, build their data pipelines, design the data warehouses, and generally deals with uh, any data or data analytics problem. So after you know me, we can actually start. Um, so if you ever built a data pipeline, it was probably looked as follows. Uh, you have an application that look that uh, gets request in REST API, does some processing, and then writes the data into your data warehouse solution, such as BigQuery, maybe Snowflake, maybe uh, Redshift or Retina. And in other cases, you might first want to write the data into GCS and only or any other storage service like uh, S3, and only then writes it into your data warehouse solution. And in Reality, you probably have a bit more complex uh, use case or data pipeline where you first want to write the data into PubSub uh, or any other message broker like uh, Kafka or SQS, and then some data, um, big data process such as Dataflow or Spark processes the data and only then loads it into GCS and BigQuery. And actually this pipeline was pretty much similar to the pipeline that we, me and Giddy actually tried to protect. And anyhow, no matter how you decide to build your data pipeline, in the end, you left with a file in your storage service that looks like this. In this case, it's a JSON file, but it also might be an Avro or Parquet. And in your data pipeline, you, you have a table uh, that looks as, looked as follow. You have the user table, and the user table has two fields, the ID and the email. 
And when you look at the, at the following table, you might consider some of the data here as sensitive, like the email, right? Like, I guess we all agree that we don't want that our user, user's email leaked. Um, and Gideon and I actually try to find a way to, to protect this, this data and not all the data. Like, like the ID we consider as not sensitive, but something like email we, we do consider as sensitive. Um, and that leads us to, um, so when we looked on how we can protect our data pipeline, we actually, doesn't work. Yeah, we actually probably want to protect it in a few different levels. The first level is what we call encryption in transit. We would like to make sure that if someone is listening to our network and sniffing the request, he won't be able to understand anything. And thankfully, this practice is provided by SSL. Uh, if you use SSL and send all your requests in HTTPS, uh, then your, your data is seamlessly, seamlessly encrypted in transit and you, you get it by default. And thanks to like all GCP services such as PubSub, GCS, and BigQuery, all of them uh, support SSL by design. And if you use these platforms, the only thing that you need to make sure that the other part of the application is actually protected. For example, your um, REST API is actually uh, protected by SSL. But when you use uh, PubSub, GCS, BigQuery, all these services using SSL, so you get it by default. The next level is what we call encryption at rest. Uh, when we speak about encryption at rest, we would like to make sure that if someone uh, succeeds in getting access to the physical hard disk in the server, he won't be able to retrieve the data. Um, and I mean that the entire file on the hard disk will be encrypted. And also in this case, uh, PubSub, GCS, BigQuery are seamlessly encrypted at rest by design. Uh, without any additional configuration, you get it by default. And as far as I know, at, at least in BigQuery, you cannot even choose to disable this functionality. So you get encrypted by rest, or you always get this functionality by default. Now, even if we protect our data pipeline, uh, yeah, even if we protect our data pipeline in those two levels, once someone has access to the table, he can see the plain data and use it as, it as he wants. Now, in many cases, those two first levels are enough. Yeah, like you, you have the data, it's protected in transit, you're protected in rest, and that's enough. But in some cases, you, you might want to be, to, to be able to encrypt the data, to secure the data in one more level, which is the, what we call the application layer encryption. What does it mean? It means that before the application writes, writes the data uh, into, uh, into PubSub, or at least before it loads into BigQuery, the application itself will encrypt the data. And then our table, we, looks as, we looked as follows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as follows. So as you can see, we have the, the user table encrypted, and while the ID is not encrypted, but the email itself is encrypted. Uh, but then you might say, right, but in some cases, I do want to have the ability to see the plain email, right? And I wish to have some such functionality like select decrypt email that will decrypt the, the email on demand when I need it. So thanks to AEAD functions, we have this ability. Mm -hmm. Let's wait. Yeah, cool. AEAD functions are a list of built-in functions provided by uh, BigQuery that give us the capacity to encrypt data and decrypt data on demand, on query time. And another thing that it gives us is, the, is to create um, keys in a straightforward and a simple way. Let, let's see how it works. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can use the deterministic decrypt string functions with, which gets three parameters. 
the key set, which is the encrypted key, the encryption key, email, which is the encrypted field, and associate the data that we won't cover today. Uh, it just makes things much more complex and I don't want to get into it. Um, and once we use this function, we got what we want. And uh, on query time, we can decrypt the encrypted email and get the plain text. So you might think, uh, okay, that's cool. We can go home and we got what we want. But everybody here, I guess, is security, one moment, is security people. And you probably tell to say to yourself, right, but that means that everybody now needs to hold the encryption key on their own computer. Like everybody, everyone that actually wants to execute some query uh, will hold it on his computer. And I need to spread this uh, key around. And this is like the encryption key is something which is top secret. I don't want to spread it around like this, right? Now, let's think for a moment that we are okay with this approach and we are okay that everybody will hold the key on their computer. Let's say that it's okay. I don't say it's okay, but let's, let's think about it for a moment. When someone executes this query, this query is written to the logs. And that means that the encryption key is going to be written to the log. Like, and, and this is something that we always want to avoid from, like people that actually write credential to the log. So, so that, that's actually a huge problem and it's make it very problematic to use this functionality as is. Now, we wanted to, to we choose to use, to use encryption in order to protect our sensitive data. So maybe we can use the same approach in order to protect our encryption key. Maybe we can just encrypt our encry encryption key and, and this way we will sec secure it. So let's see how it looks. Uh, we have the encryption key, which is what we call the data encryption key, or we call it the deck. We create another uh, encryption key, which is the key encryption key. We call it the CAC, and we encrypt the deck using the CAC and gets wrapper. The wrapper is not sensitive. It's not sensitive because it's the encrypted deck. We can only decrypt it if we have the CAC itself. So if you have the wrapper, you can commit the wrapper to, um, uh, you can commit the wrapper to Git, you can spread the wrapper around. You don't know, need to worry about uh, protecting. Um, and from the application perspective, yeah, from the application perspective, it looks as follows. The application gets the wrapper, gets the, the, the cake, decrypt the wrapper using the cake, and gets the deck into the memory. Once it has the deck in the memory, it can encrypt or decrypt the data as it did it before. But you're looking at it and you say, yeah, but this is not the same problem, like what about the cake? Now, before that I was supposed to spread the, spread the cake around, the deck around, and now I need to spread the cake around. So we didn't solve anything here. So we probably want to, to have some other uh, way to protect the, the, the cake. And the solution here is to, to use some external service that will hold uh, and store the cake securely for us. And we will, we will be only, have the ability to request him to decrypt the wrapper when we, when we need. And thanks to uh, Google KMS, yeah, Google KMS, Google KMS is a key management server service. We have this capacity. Uh, Google KMS is a service in, in, uh, in Google that give us the capacity first to create the key. So we can create the cake using Google KMS. And once we create the cake there, Google KMS will hold it securely, securely for us. And it also gives us the capacity to encrypt the data use, uh, or the deck in our case using the, this uh, cake or decrypt the wrapper using this cake. What Google KMS doesn't give us by design is the ability to export the key. So we can create the cake in KMS, but no one, even the person that actually create the cake won't be able to export the cake from KMS. So the, the, the cake itself is completely secure, secure in KMS. So let's 
a moment. Okay, so how does it look? Uh, how can we create the wrapper when we use Google KMS? So the first thing that we need to do is to create the cake in Google KMS. We can do it by a few clicks in the UR. And then we create the deck in the same way we did it before. Ask Google KMS to encrypt the deck using the cake and get the wrapper. And I remind you, the wrapper itself is not secure. It's not, it's not sensitive. You can do whatever you want with it. And then from the application's perspective, the application gets the wrapper and ask Google KMS to decrypt the, the, the wrapper using the URI to the cake. So it doesn't hold the cake itself. It only holds the URI to the cake. Google KMS will verify that the application has the right permission to decrypt the, the wrapper using the cake and will return the deck into the application, to the application. And once the application has the deck in the memory, it can encrypt the data or decrypt the data, same as before, uh, same as before. Now, mm -hmm. okay, so now we, we uh, I, let's, let's see some coding and let's see how it uh, looks. Now, Allow me to note, you don't need to worry about remembering it, everything, copy or taking screenshot. In the end of this talk, I'm going to send you a blog post with a step-by-step -step instruction. You can just follow them. But for the moment, just follow me, all right? Uh, so as we said, the first thing what you should, we should do is to create the cake in KMS. Uh, we can do it in a few clicks in the UI, but we can also do it by uh, using the CLI. Uh, in order to do that, the first thing we should do is to create a keyring. A keyring is a groups, it's a group of keys in KMS. And after we create this uh, group of keys, we can create the cake related to this keyring. The result of this uh, um, command will be a cake created and stored securely in KMS. And uh, we will have only the URI to the cake. Once we have the cake, uh, created in KMS, we can finally create the wrapper. So in order to generate the wrapper, we will use uh, another functions of AEAD functions, which is keys.new uh, uh, wrapped keyset, which gets two parameters. The first parameters is the URI to the cake, and the second parameter is the type of key that we would like to create. BigQuery in this case, under the hood, will generate a new deck send it to KMS. KMS will verify that uh, BigQuery or the user that executes this query has the right permission to use the CAC, decrypt the, the CAC, and will return um, the encrypted deck to, the, um, to BigQuery and to the user, and the user will, will, will get the wrapper. And I remind you, the wrapper is gibberish, okay? Uh, Take a look, we didn't sew the deck along the way, okay? We only got the wrapper. So now we got the wrapper and we can finally decrypt the data. One moment. Now we will talk in a moment about how to encrypt the data, um, but let's assume for a moment that we have data that already encrypted by using this, uh, using this wrapper. Um, so, uh, same as before, we will use the deterministic decrypt string, uh, but instead of providing the actual encryption key, we will use another AEAD function, which is keys.keysetchain. These functions get two parameters, the URI to the CAC and the wrapper itself. BigQuery, in query lifetime, once, only once in query lifetime, and not for every email, we ask KMS to decrypt the wrapper, use it in order to decrypt the data, and then discard it. So we will be able to get the decrypted data, but we won't uh, be able to, to, to get the, the, wrap, the deck itself. And yes, yeah. And this is how it looks. We got what we want and that's cool. But I guess you all agree that this is a bit complex. It, it's a huge amount of code in order to just decrypt data. And if everybody, every time I need to decrypt some field, I will have to read all of this and it's all to multi-statement. 
I'm not sure that people will be happy to do it. And we solve it by creating a UDF, just a function in BigQuery that hide all this functionality. As you can see, uh, it's hide the, the, the actual call to decrypt and also hide the URI to the cake and hide the wrapper itself. And then you can just do select decrypt email and get the decrypted email uh, just as we wanted to achieve at the beginning, but without holding the actual encryption key. Okay. Uh, cool. Let's take a moment to talk about permission. I always say, yeah, if the application has the right permission, if, I, if the user has the right permission, so let's understand what is the right permission. So once we create a once we create a key in KMS, we have two different kinds of roles. The first role is what we call encryptor decryptor. If a user is assigned to this role, uh, it means that he can ask KMS to decrypt the wrapper and reveal the plain deck. Uh, and this is exactly what we wanted to avoid, okay? Like uh, the user holds the wrapper, ask KMS uh, to decrypt the wrapper and get the deck. And no, we don't want that any every anyone will have access to the deck itself. This is top secret. And for that reason, for that reason, Google create very, very co uh, cool access role, uh, which is decrypted via delegation. When user is assigned to this role, he cannot decrypt the wrapper by himself, but he can delegate the permission to different GCP service such as BigQuery. BigQuery in this case will ask KMS on runtime to decrypt the wrapper, use the deck to decrypt the data, and then discard the deck. So in this case, the data will be decrypted, but the deck, but the deck will stay secured and the user will never have access to it. And therefore, and that's important, all human users should be assigned to decryptor via delegation, and no one ever should be assigned to an uh, encryptor decryptor role. Yeah, it's very important. If you assign someone to an encryptor decryptor role, it's actually mean like you, you are okay with the fact that he will be able to re retrieve the plain deck. Okay? Now, I can't stress it enough. Like, take a look. The deck itself was never revealed to any user during this process. Even when we created the wrapper, we didn't saw the deck itself. So do you understand how significant is that? Cool. We spoke a lot about how to decrypt the data, but we need to encrypt it somehow, right? Like uh, encrypt, it, decrypt is okay, but who is going to encrypt it? We probably want to do it on the application side. Uh, and in order to do it, like before we load it into BigQuery. So in order to do uh, to, to, to do it in the application side, we can use a, an open source library named Tink that developed by Google that actually makes dealing with the uh, uh, encryption and encryption key very, very simple. So if we use Tink, uh, it's actually as two kind of version, one in Python and one in Java. Here we will going to see the Python version. So um, the first thing that we need to do on the application side is of course, to decrypt the wrapper, we would like to get the deck. So we do it using uh, the object think.keyset.handle, which gets surprise two parameter, the wrapper and the URI to the kick. Uh, Keyset handle in this case will ask KMS to decrypt the wrapper and to decrypt the wrapper. And if the application has the right permission, and in this case, it will be decryptor and not decryptor via delegation. Why? Because this is not a GCP service. Okay. And that's important. Note it. We will talk about it in a minute. And then KMS will return the deck to the application. And once the, the application holds the deck in the memory, uh, we can create a cipher object and that's just encrypt or decrypt the data as we want. And you see like in a, a very few lines of code, we can start encrypting or decrypting data. Now notice, once the application creates the cipher object, it holds the deck in the memory, okay? Which means that if an individual will have access to the server, they will be able to retrieve the deck. And therefore, you should restrict access to the server and make sure that any maintenance is applied from outside. You can do it by CI or maybe logs, 
but no one should have SSH access to the server itself. Okay, SSH access to the server, it actually means that someone can uh, retrieve the deck from the server. This is something that you wanted to you want to avoid from. So I think it's a great library and see how you can just start encrypting in few lines of code. Another option is to encrypt the data in BigQuery. It's a less common use case, but in some cases you might want to use it. We, you can do it uh, just by calling deterministic encrypt, same as we did it with deterministic decrypt function. You just call deterministic decrypt, encrypt in this case. And you probably would like to, to use it when you are modeling. For example, um, if you would like to extract uh, the username from email. So the first thing that you will do is to decrypt the email, extract the uh, username from the email, use it, and then uh, and then decrypt the, the emails. Uh, sorry, the, in, encrypt the usernames. Uh, so uh, like you will use the deterministic encrypt in order to encrypt the email. So it's a less common use case, but you might want to use it. And probably it's for modeling. I, I didn't find any other use case because you don't want to load the data uh, as plain data to BigQuery and only then encrypt it encrypt it, right? So our data pipeline is uh, secured in all the three levels, on, also on the application layer. Cool, few more things before we finish. So I would like to take a moment to speak about deterministic and non-deterministic encryption. Uh, as you saw, all my examples were about deterministic encryption, but BigQuery supports the equivalent functionality also for uh, non-deterministic encryption. Let's take a moment to understand what is the difference between deterministic and non-deterministic. Uh, deterministic means that no matter how many times you will encrypt the same data, for, uh, for example, the email aa at aa.com with the same key, you will get the same gibberish. While in non-deterministic, you will get different gibberish every time, even uh, for the same email. Now, we will, when you use the deterministic encryption, you can still get some insight about the data, even if you don't decrypt it. Uh, for example, we can select uh, the count distinct of emails without decrypting the data. On the other hand, from, if you use non-deterministic, you cannot infer anything from the data. Now, it doesn't mean that deterministic is less uh, secure because, for example, if most of the questions that you actually want to ask, you can uh, answer them without decrypting the data, then it's better to use deterministic, right? So the decision regarding which, uh, um, which method to choose is pretty much depend on your use case. And you will need to think about it and determine what is the preferred method, like uh, compared to the, the use case itself. Uh, I guess you wonder regarding performance. Uh, that's a good question because encryption get more resources, require more resources. So I try to figure out what is the efficiency of the crypt function. So I created a table with 100 million records of 64 random bytes, encrypt them and then run some query that would decrypt them all. In order to make sure that it's actually decrypted and scanned all the data, you know, because BigQuery do some optimization. Uh, so uh, I use, I tried, uh, I use two different queries, one with sub, string, and group by, the second one with the select distinct, and then run the same query once on the plain text. And, and the second time I de call decrypt first to encrypt the data. And as you can see, the elapsed time, which is the actual query time, meaning the time that it took to the query to return, it's almost the same in this case. But when we look on slow time uh, that present the amount of resources that required in order to execute this query, there was an overhead of uh, 50 to 80%. So as you know, BigQuery use more slots uh, when the query is more complex, but it depends on the general load and the availability of resources. Uh, so we cannot guarantee that the elapsed time will be remain the same. And also the more complex you, uh, you query, the more uh, slower it might be in the end. In my opinion, uh, decrypting 100 million records in 22 seconds is still super fast and impressive, 
but uh, it's really a good reason to encrypt only the data that you really sensitive and not everything. Okay, so just something that is really sensitive, you actually want to, to encrypt. What about pricing? Here it is. So remember that uh, the function keys.keyset uh, chain called only once in query lifetime, uh, not for every email. So that means that uh, we only charge for a single decrypt call, which is nothing compared to, uh, to the query cost since KMS charges for 0.03 US dollar per 10,000 request, decrypt, decrypt request. So it's insignificant. What you should be aware of is the storage over it. Now, um, each field, that you encrypt as an overhead of 21 bytes, no matter what was the original uh, value is. Now, this is firstly affects the storage costs, that's fine, but more importantly, the query cost. Why? Since BigQuery actually charges per the scan byte. So now you're scanning more bytes. Like think of example that uh, your average uh, size of plain data is 10 bytes, and now we have overheads of 21 bytes. So we triple our storage, but we also triple our query cost. And that's it. another good reason to encrypt only the data that you that is really sensitive and not everything. And, and last point, before we finish, uh, there is some limitation for this mechanism and when it's come to uh, multi-tenancy. As you remember, the function keys.keys a chain uh, called in processing time, once in query lifetime. So we cannot create a table like stand and trappers and use it dynamically. So if you want to encrypt each tenant with different key, you will be able to encrypt uh, them on the application side and load the data uh, to BigQuery, but, and also use BigQuery in order to decrypt the data, but you will be able to decrypt only single tenant in a time. And if you would like to decrypt all of them, you, uh, you will have to write some code that doing it or some um, statement or um, use the execute immediate, but you won't be able to do something like select uh, decrypt star, for example. So this is some limitation that you need to consider when you use this feature. Uh, and we got to the end of this talk. And my mes main message for you is to keep data security in mind. Think about protecting your sensitive data. I think you already know the principle and you saw how BigQuery actually makes it uh, easy to implement. But I would also like to ask you, do it only when it's actually needed. Don't encrypt everything. Think about the analysts that are using the tables, okay? Like, and think how annoying it will be to call decrypt anytime. Like, select decrypt, select decrypt, select decrypt. Nobody would like to use it. And if this is what you will do, if you will encrypt everything, people will probably start to save a decrypted version of your data in the, uh, on the side. And this is something that you definitely want to avoid from. So just keep it in mind. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed enjoyed this talk. Uh, as I promised, you have a barcode. Uh, you have a barcode here that uh, directs you to a blog that I wrote with a step by step instruction. You can just follow it and implement it in, on your site. Uh, you are welcome to follow me on Medium, add me to your LinkedIn network, or reach out uh, regarding any data problems you have or any other um, coding problem that you have. Thank you very much. And I see no questions. So there are any questions? There is, there is one question. So thank you, thank you very much, Ron. I'm referring back to uh, the presentation that Alex did in the beginning. And one of the things that Alex uh, uh, said is, you should rotate your keys. So what do you have to say about rotating uh, cake, deck, and the wrapper? All right, so it's actually something that we're still trying to figure out. Now, the, the point, um, BigQuery and AAD functions give us the ability to rotate the wrapper, but this functionality, when we rotate the wrapper, uh, it's only rotated the, the future data that we're going to, to encrypt. Like from the step that we rotate the, 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 the wrapper, all the new data will, um, will be encrypted with the new key. 
but we get something that is uh, called the key chain. So we have all the different keys on the same wrapper, and then BigQuery knows to, uh, how to select the relevant trap, uh, the relevant deck in order to decrypt the data. Now, if someone succeeds in uh, uh, decrypting the wrapper and gets the plain uh, key chain, so he will be able to decrypt all the data. So probably uh, once, uh, I don't know when, but you should decide about a period that you actually uh, go and decrypt and encrypt all your data with a new wrapper. Like uh, it's probably not all the time and you can rotate um, the keychain or use a deck for the for small periods, but then sometimes you will have to decrypt all the data and encrypt all the data again. Thank you very much for that one. So uh, if you have more questions uh, here or later, again, you can ask right now or you can, uh, of course, approach each one of those uh, amazing panelists and ask them uh, directly. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for listening. I really hope that it was uh, interesting. Uh, just to wrap it up uh, very, very quickly. So if you remember, we started with Alex Pelling. Uh, Alex uh, managed to scare us all, but in a good way, explaining why it's important to think about, uh, to use our minds, to, to use our uh, heads when we do things, uh, uh, because eventually there are people that are looking to arm us, there are looking, uh, people that are looking for either the value of our data or uh, for, for our data because we know that value. Uh, referring back to you, Vivian. Uh, then we moved on to Ben, uh, and Ben uh, from Sato remind, reminded us uh, that because security is important and we want to secure things, again, based on what Alex uh, uh, explained why it's important. Uh, so we all understood why it's important. Then Ben told us, uh, rightfully that if you want to do it the right in the right pace, same pace of DevOps, we should uh, uh, take the approach of uh, data secops, of automating things, of looking at things, uh, uh, shifting left also that, uh, that notion of, of security and doing it in the, the right and the smartest way uh, and not the old, the, the, like the old ways. And then Ran, thanks for again. Uh, th thank you again for uh, your part which is, again, how to encrypt our data in an almost seamlessly way, which, again, helps even if we failed some in here, there, or there uh, with our access control, at least the data is encrypted. Again, unless if you remember, if you gave your uh, developers or your uh, users access to encrypted decrypter. And I think that uh, while we were speaking, uh, Ben probably went and made sure that the uh, it will be even a configuration in their uh, solution, uh, making sure that no one has the encrypted decrypter. Uh, so thank you guys, thank you everyone. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, the presentations of today uh, are going to be uploaded, uh, same for the recordings. Uh, so keep checking our uh, LinkedIn and meetup uh, pages uh, and you will you can actually get access to those things uh, if you need them, if you need some, some of those slides uh, to refresh your memory. And we look forward to meeting you in the next meetup. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.